I'm Noriko Bolfo, and this is on Top News. We begin tonight's broadcast with some pretty expected news. Jagdeo is taking the elections case to the CCJ. He, on the behalf of the PPP, is asking the court to block Lowenfield and GCOM from declaring the results of the elections by Lowenfield's tabulations. They also ask the CCJ to restrain GCOM from taking any further steps to determine whether the recounted votes as tabulated by the chief's elections officer constitutes a, quote, final credible count, end quote. The PPP is arguing that the Guiana Court of Appeal has no jurisdiction to hear the case in the first place, as the president has yet to be declared. Here is something that will probably scare some of you viewers watching in New York. Trump is snatching visas. Due to the Rona, he is extending a pause on some green cards and suspending visas for other foreign workers until the end of 2020. The White House first announced it was halting those visas in April, an order that had been set to expire on Monday. Existing visa holders are not expected to be affected under the new restrictions. The order also applies to H-1B visas, many of which are granted to Indian tech workers. The order will suspend H-2B visas for seasonal workers, including those in the hospitality industry, J-1 short-term exchange visas. That is a category that includes university students and foreign live-in nannies, L visas for managers and other key employees of multinational corporations will also be suspended. Trump says the move will create more jobs for Americans by minimizing the foreign workforce. But critics say he is exploiting the situation to tighten immigration laws. If any of the aforementioned applies to you, you probably want to find a good immigration lawyer. Please don't ask me where to find one. It is not wise to take legal advice from a cartoon. Triple B's is at it again, solving problems that you thought were big. No need to look like a werewolf lady. Get this. Flawless rechargeable trimmer delivered right to your door by calling telephone number 682-8326. Triple B's Enterprise, remember the name. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, or CAFRA, received a grant from the IDB to improve the coordination of the Caribbean's health response to the pandemic. The U.S. $750,000 grant will support the enhancement of laboratory response capacity at CAFRA, mobilize surge, and strengthen real-time disease surveillance and response through the CAFRA Regional Travelers Health Program. Additionally, it will strengthen virus detection capacities in Barbados, Belize, Guiana, Jamaica, and Trinidad and Tobago. This will begin next month and will run until June 2022. Two NGSA students in Letham tested positive for the Rona on June 21st and 22nd. According to reports, they live in Bonfim, Brazil, but attend school in Letham. The students are among eight others who recently returned from Brazil to write the Caribbean Secondary Examination Certificate and NGSA exams. But apparently the Rona is not enough to stop these kids from having to take the exams. Newsroom says that the students are still being taught while under quarantine. Teachers are sending worksheets via WhatsApp, and those without internet access are working from printed documents. Brazil is only second to the US in active cases of the Rona, having over 1.1 million cases. Like this video and share it with one or two of your WhatsApp contacts and then let me know in the comments what you think of today's top stories. By the way, where are you watching from? The two victims of Sunday's hit and run on the Enmore Public Road have been identified as brothers. 16-year-old Sheldon Major and 14-year-old Christopher Pollard, both of Enmore East Coast Demerara. Sheldon reportedly died at the scene while Christopher is in critical condition at the Georgetown Public Hospital. The GPF is still seeking the public's assistance in tracking the persons responsible for this senseless, senseless crime. 
Kaichor News has the source on the man who was threatening the government and supporters last week. On Monday, the police released 26-year-old Jermaine Kingston, the man who was captured last week following the circulation of a video on social media in which he was allegedly heard making threats against Abnu AFC while showing off his weapons. The order was received from the High Court after the police neglected to charge him before the 72-hour holding period ended. Ranks had received information that the man was attached to the Nazardine Mohammed security firm. Culture News says Kingston was not an armed security guard, merely a gateman who only came to the company just three months ago. However, the security firm denied ownership of the weapon seen in the video. He was, however, previously employed with KGM security as an armed security guard, but the KGM head of security revealed that Kingston only worked for four months before quitting right before the elections. KGM officials also denied ownership of the weapons in question. Hmm, the plot thickens. You there, rich person, this 2019 Jeep Wrangler will be a good look for you. Talk to BM Soat about reservation of this unit. Call them on telephone number 231-8451 or visit their showroom at Lot 9 Crow Street, Georgetown. BM Soat Auto Sales. It's your turn to drive or drive something of your caliber at least. Two young men are currently in hospital after being shot and beaten during a birthday party at Friendship Village East Baby's quarantine on Sunday night. Injured is 22-year-old Joe Fraser and 36-year-old Boop Paul Rupnerai. An eyewitness told the newsroom that shortly after 10 p.m., Fraser left the yard and was attacked by four men who were armed with a shotgun and several pieces of wood. Hearing the commotion, Rupnerai and others ran to help. In the process, Rupnerai was also shot and beaten. Frazier is currently nursing a broken arm and foot, head injuries and gunshot wounds to his body, while Rupnerine was shot in the foot and abdomen. Police do not know the motive behind the attack. However, one of the suspects is currently in custody. A bandit who was last week sentenced to three years behind bars was yesterday given an additional year for wounding a businessman during the robbery. Keon Harlequin, also known as Pease of One Mile Wisner, Linden, appeared before Magistrate Wanda Fortune at the Magistrate's Court, where he was charged virtually. Harlequin pleaded guilty to the charge, which stated that on June the 11th, 2020, at One Mile Wisner, Linden, he unlawfully wounded Herbert Campbell. Last week, he appeared before the same magistrate and was sentenced to three years behind bars after admitting to robbing the businessman and having in his possession illegal firearms and ammunition. And for our weird story of the day, here's a guy you might want to take with you the next time you go to Princess Casino. For not once, but two times. A man in the U.S. state of Michigan has won a $4 million lottery game. Mark Clark of South Rockwood scratched a ticket with a coin that was given to him by his late father about 10 years ago. They often fished together after Clark won a different $4 million instant lottery game in 2017. Clark said in a statement released by the Michigan Lottery, quote, you don't think you'll win millions once and you definitely never think it'll happen twice. It's hard to put into words exactly what I'm feeling. I can't help but think maybe that lucky coin helped me win this. Clark chose a lump sum of about $2.5 million instead of taking $4 million in payments over time. He said, quote, I've had lots of ups and lots of downs in my life, but everything is pretty amazing now, of course. You just won the lottery, of course everything's amazing now. Reporting for Uncut News, I am Noriko Bullfool. Hey Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!